Dear friends, it is my privilege to welcome you again to Sailor Times and to connect through New Hope TV. And uh, we will meditate you know, on God's word together. And may we receive grace to use this time well. The caption for today, this message, is the touch that changed everything. The touch that changed everything. But before I go into the topic, I wanted to share with you something. You know, I was going through some of the old photographs of our institution and uh, uh, one of the photographs of uh, about 50 years old photo that showed a picture of a young man standing in the latest, then latest fashion, the fashion of the day. He was wearing a very large bell-bottomed trouser that was the latest at that time, bell bottoms. And some of you may not have seen that, but that was considered to be the modern, up to date, you know, the fashion at that time. So they change. So even in ancient Israel, the law abiding gurus, the rabbis, would wear what was called as talit. Talit was a prayer shawl, if you would like, and it had four tassels at the ends. And some of those tassels were so elaborately, intricately made, and they would have 613 knots in each of them. And 365 of them would be because of, uh, they would refer to thou shalt not, don't do this, negative loss and 248 of them were thou shalt laws the positive ones very interesting very interesting but you know those were reminders for them of god's laws and god's word what are reminders for us we don't need those tassels these days jesus himself said in uh, John chapter 14 and verse 26, I will read that for you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Nevertheless, it's important to uh, keep, in, keep reminding ourselves of the requirements, the Word of God. You know, in Psalm 119 verses 9 and 11, in King James Version, it says, How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Well, Jesus wore, you know, probably wore one of these talits, prayer shawls, had those tassels at the ends the four corners and uh, we know that Jesus did not own too many of these clothes he was not a rich person he did not he was not born into a rich family he did not run after that how do we know that yes in uh, Matthew chapter 8 a scribe a well accomplished religious leader he comes to Jesus and what does he say uh, I want to follow you wherever you go and what does Jesus tell him that is given in verse 20 of Matthew 8. Very interesting. Jesus says, read that. Let's read that together. Instead, Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Wow. This is just the opposite of what prosperity gospel would say. This is something different. And Jesus said he did not own much. And he was actually telling, asking the scribe, do you really want to follow me? Count the cost, come if you want, but then don't come for prosperity's sake. That was his instruction to this young man. Well, Jesus probably, you know, wore even uh, knitted or donated garments. We, 
we have, um, you know, we, we know that he did not own too much. But there was this woman who dared to touch one of those tassels. We don't know whether it was a tassel that she touched or was it just the edge of his garment. Because it is, it is mentioned in three of the Gospels. And this lady comes from behind and touches the edge of Jesus' garment. And uh, it is very clearly, interestingly uh, mentioned by Dr. Luke. And we know that Luke was a very devout person, follower of Jesus Christ. He was a, he was a confidant of uh, uh, Paul the Apostle. He was a co-worker. We know that in uh, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14, Luke is referred to as the beloved physician. The beloved physician, he says. He greets you. And Paul is writing this. And also in Philemon, verses 23 and 24, and uh, there is a reference to Luke as a fellow laborer. So very, you know, interesting physician. And he is the one who is documenting this in Luke chapter 8. This was something very unusual. Why was that? It was actually risky for this lady to come through the midst of these people, men, and come and touch the edge of this teacher, Rabbi, well-known guru who was leading a group of people. Why is that so? If you go to Leviticus chapter 15, we see that any woman who had an issue of blood, you know, that is the King James Version rendering of that. She had a problem, bleeding issue, and this was going on for 12 years. And it was in, uh, mentioned very clearly in Leviticus chapter 15 that she would be considered unclean. And if she sat on a bed, that bed would be unclean. Anybody who touched her would be unclean. If she touched a vessel and somebody came and touched that vessel, they would be unclean. Can you imagine that? Initially, she would be tolerated at home. Slowly, people would look down upon her. Oh no, she has come again. How do we manage this? She was an untouchable. After months, after a few months, maybe after a year, even relatives, close family would say, well, we are tired of her. We don't know what to do with her because she makes all of us unclean all the time. We cannot go to festivals. We cannot go to the synagogue. And this lady had it. And how long did she suffer? It is very clearly mentioned that it went on for 12 years. 12 years. Not a joke. And if you fall ill for a day or two, you get tired and you say, when will I be all right? And, you know, when you have common cold, you, you look forward to getting rid of that. As someone said, okay, if you take this medicine, it will take, you know, you will be all right in one week. If you don't take this medicine, it will take seven days <laughs> to get over that illness. But then we, we find it very inconvenient. Can you imagine this lady? Twelve years of suffering. And Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, it is very interesting that he mentions she had suffered under the care of many physicians. Well, it was not their fault. They probably did their best, but then nothing would work. And it did not. And uh, modern medicine and surgery was not available at that time and she really suffered and she decides to come and break the law the rules she was desperate she wanted to come and touch the edge of jesus garment it's also very interesting my friends that uh, king james version the authorized the old version mentions it yeah except john all the other three 
Gospels mention this. The word used, as I said earlier, is an issue of blood. Did you know that all of us as human beings have an issue with our blood? Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. We have an issue of our blood. <laughs> it is there. It is there. You know, there was a very, very naughty child who was brought. Father was saying, oh, I don't know what to do with him. He's so naughty. And jokingly, I said, oh, don't blame him. It is in his blood. <laughs> and, you know, in a sense, we have an issue of blood. In the sense, there is a tendency and, you know, we are born in sin and therefore we sin, not the other way. We don't become sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners and we are born in that. And there is redemption through Jesus Christ. And that is the gospel. That is the message of the gospel. There is deliverance from this issue of blood. But here, it is this lady who comes. She comes from behind. And in Luke chapter 8, you must go through this passage. And it's very interesting. It's a dramatic passage. She comes, she touches. And what do the others do? His, you know, the disciples stand around and they say, you know, because Jesus had stopped the walk and he looks around and he questions saying, who touched me? And people ask him, maybe Peter, they say, Lord, what do you mean? What do you mean? Everybody is falling on you, pushing you. It's, it's a crowd all around you. And what do you mean by saying, who touched me? He says, no, power has gone out of me. And he looks around and this lady is terrified. Not only because she knew she, had, she was discovered, she had broken the rules in one sense, but then also because it was an encounter with this holy God. It was like Simon Peter. Initially, when he met Jesus and he says, I am a sinner, leave me. <laughs> that was the response. Isaiah the prophet said that. Woe unto me in Isaiah chapter 6. I am a man of unclean lips who lives among unclean people with unclean lips. You know, that is the conviction she had. She fell down, terrified, trembling, and she confessed everything. But she, she is given an assurance. Your faith has made you whole. There are four things that we want to, we want to um, meditate together. First is that Jesus can still be touched. Dear friend, say that wherever you are. Jesus can still be touched today. In Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14. Let's read that together. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Basically, he's saying he is touched by the fact that we need help, that we are broken and that we are helpless and therefore need help. He is touched by that. Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 48. Mark 10, 46 to 48. We will read that. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. 
but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Bartimaeus was an insignificant man in the eyes of the world because even his name is not mentioned. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, only his father's name is known. He hears that Jesus was leaving Jericho. He had heard of the mighty things that Jesus had done. He probably knew in his heart that this was the Messiah about whom prophets had spoken many years ago, 700, 800 years before that, that he would come and that Messiah had come at that time. The eyes of his uh, faith were opened and he wanted, he shouts out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus of Nazareth is here, is what people told him. But when he started shouting, all the people started, you know, trying to quieten him down. Shh, don't make noise. Jesus is busy. He is actually delivering a, delivering a lecture. He, as he walked, he would talk. But he did not listen. And Jesus stops. Call him, he says. Oh boy, did he reach out. Jesus stopped. What do you want me to do? Lord, I want to see. I want to see. He did not wax eloquent. Oh, our Lord, we want to thank you. No, nothing. He just said, Lord, I want to see. It was a simple request. It was a heartfelt prayer. And that was true from his heart. Go, your faith has healed you. Jesus can still be touched. He touched Jesus through his plea. The lady in the passage today, you know, the lady with the issue of blood reached out. You and I can reach out wherever you are, dear friend, dear brother, dear sister. Your need, each one's need, our needs are so unique, different. But you can reach out. It's not about the religion, but about the person of Jesus Christ, religion you know, as we see, will not help. It's the person of Jesus Christ. There is power even on the edge of his cloak because he is the one, the creator of the universe, the heavens and the earth. He is the one who endured power into those atoms. So much of power. Galaxies, trillions and trillions of them. Beyond our understanding, and no wonder that the edge of his garment had power. Many people pushed around. That is what we show on the outside. But those who touch in faith, there was something different, unique. And Jesus can still be touched. Secondly, Jesus still touches people. Today, <laughs> touch is important to people. Isn't that true? I remember... Uh, you know, there was a physician in an old time physician. He is no more in a small coastal town of Karnataka. And uh, he was well known because he would just walk around and then j just touch people. You know, just pat them and then move on. And people longed to be touched because they knew he was genuine, that he cared, that he loved. It was unimaginable that this lady would dare to touch the rabbi but she had nothing to lose nothing to lose jesus still touches people in matthew chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 Matthew 8, 1 to 3, let's read that together. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Well, he did that repeatedly, touching those with Hansen's disease. And at that time, they were called lepers. And it's, 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 it's a term that we do not use. 
now. Disciples probably would have warned him. No, 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 Lord, you can't touch this man because he's got leprosy. You will become unclean. You, 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 you will become unclean. No, Lord, please. But he broke those rules because power and purification came through him. Jesus still touches people. Father Damien was someone, he died at the age of 49 in uh, 1889. He was working among the Molokai um, uh, people in Hawaii. That was a place where it was a leprosy colony. At that time again there was no cure and he went and he was not well accepted and one day as he was working with them and he would uh, build with them, he would make houses with them, he would uh, strive with them, he was digging graves for them, he was making coffins for them, he worked hard but still they looked at him as someone from outside. He was an outsider. One day as they were sitting around the fire, a little coal fell on his foot and it, he did not realize it. They immediately recognized that he had lost his sensation and that he had got this disease which affects those peripheral nerves. And they said, look, he is one of us because he had got the disease after living with them, working with them and in close contact with them over some years. He had contracted that disease. And, uh, you know, he was, he became one of them. He, he was accepted. What a change in that community. So much of hope. And they accepted the message of the gospel because of that. And Jesus touched lepers, Hansen's disease, patients with Hansen's disease. Father Damien did as he was a follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, well, and he still does that. He still does that, dear friend. Sometimes it is the second touch which we need. He still touches. Elijah was running away from him. He was depressed. He had encountered Jezebel the queen and he knew his life was in danger. And he says, no, Lord, I can't take it anymore. Enough is enough. He needed the second touch of the Lord. It was the angel of the Lord who comes and encourages him and gives him and attends to his physical needs. Well, somebody said, when you are hanging by a thread, make sure it is the hem of his garment. I will read that again. When you are hanging by a thread, make sure it is the hem of his garment. I remember meeting an, uh, the, a young gentleman. He said he, was, he had become, you know, halfway through his graduation, he had become an addict to drugs and he knew that he would never be able to get out and he was afraid, he wanted to get out and he could not muster energy or courage to break the habit. But one day he fell down on his knees, he was crying out and saying, Lord, you touch so many people, but will you touch me? And he said, he cried, he wept, but when he woke up, the desire which had engulfed him for many years just left instantly. Well, for many people, they would need professional help. That's a different matter. For this gentleman, it was instant. Jesus still touches people, dear friends. Well, thirdly, you can go to him for others' sake. To be touched for others' sake. You can reach him. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve that you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. The centurion, the army officer, came there for his servant's sake. Remarkable man. In John chapter 4, verses 49 and 50, the royal official comes there. And he has come there, he came there for his son's sake. And he pleads with him. And... Uh, Jesus says, go home, he will be healed. And it says something very remarkable. He left, having taken Jesus at his word. He took Jesus at his word. Dear friend, it is our privilege to take him at his word. Mark 2, 
3 and 4, we see the paralyzed man being lowered in front of Jesus. He looks up, sees their faith and this man is healed. So they came for someone else. Finally, come to him for your own sake. Your own sake. We can do that. We can do that. The lady did this and she was healed. She was healed. Well, Hannah was crying out. Eli did not understand. But then, you know, no, my Lord, I am a woman who is deeply disturbed. She cried out. You can come to him. Come to the Lord for your own sake. Dear brother and dear sister, whatever your issue is, come to him for others' sake, for your own sake. Because Jesus can still be touched and he still touches people. And uh, I trust that you will study these passages and it will bless your heart and because Jesus still touches people and he can still be touched.